there are two kinds of things you want to be able to do with data. You want to be able to use it. And that involves calling constructors. And you want to be able to display it, which is what some of this code is for. Let's look a little bit at how, how you might use these constructors. We might, for example, have a function called main. And we would call the constructor function. Like, let's say we want to make a new cut. We would use the new cut function. And the cut takes a start and an end point. So we would want to use the point constructor. So notice how we're putting two constructors together. And then the, each point takes a pair of numbers. So let's put some numbers in there. Plug in a couple. So this would be a cut that goes from the point 0, 020 to the point 00. And in order to do anything with this, you need to take this thing you just constructed and save it to a variable, like item. And then the question is, what do you do with it? Well, I mean, you could call you could call the toString method if you wanted to turn it into a string that you could print out. Why don't we try that? We could say players send message, send message, and on the on item we'll call the to string method with no parameters and what that'll do is turn this item into a string that we then send as a message to ourselves it's a very simple main method here so i'll run cuts here and we see that it prints out at the bottom 0, 0 to 0, 020, which is exactly what the toString function of a cut should do. It prints out the start point and the end point. Of course, the more interesting way of displaying a cut is to actually build some blocks with it in Minecraft. So that's what the build cut method is for. Um, it first finds all the points inside of a cut and then it builds a block at each of those points. This is a, an, a nice example of how, some of how data needs to be sometimes transformed before you can do something that you want to with it. A cut is just a line. It starts somewhere and it ends somewhere. It's really just as far as the computer is concerned it's this point and it's this point, it doesn't actually know about the po the line in between. That's just how we draw it. Uh, we draw it because we know that what we want to represent is a line. But there's no real line. There's really just two points. So in order to build it, to build a block at each of these places in between these two points, we have to transform the cut into a bunch of points where we can build blocks. And so that's what the points for cut function is. In our case, cuts are only ever horizontal or vertical. So it's pretty easy to find the blocks in between. We just first figure out if it's vertical or if it is horizontal. Depending on which it is, we loop from either the start Y to the end Y or the start X to the end X. We create a point every time we go through the loop and we add that to the list that we return. And so what that does is if let's say it's the vertical cut, we end up returning all the points, all the locations in between. And once we do that transformation, it becomes much easier to build the cut. We just take all of those points and for each one of them, we build the point. In building the point, something kind of neat is happening here. This is actually the only function where we use the drone. It's the only function where the drone places a block. The first thing it does is it 
looks at the point that we want to build at. It moves the drone left, whatever the value of the x in that point is. So let's pretend we have the point 2, 4. It'll take the drone, let's say it starts here, and it'll move it left 2. And then it will move it forward, whatever the y value is. So it moves over 2, moves up 4. That's where the point actually creates a block. So the block ends up right here. And then it moves the drone right, the x value again, which is 2. And it moves it backwards, whatever the y value is, which is 4. The purpose of this move and this move is just to get the drone back wherever it started. Because, like I said, this is the only function where we are building with the drone. Um, so this drone is going to be doing a lot of work. But every time it builds a point, it goes out, it builds it, and it comes right back. So that the next time we build a point, it'll be in the starting location. Which means all the points that it builds will be in the right place relative to each other. So in the interest of doing a more interesting display here, let's use the build cut function. We'll build the cut that we created right here, which is called item. And we'll build it with a new drone, a brand new drone. That's going to build every point in that cut. 0, 0 to 0, 20, and it will also build all of the blocks in that cut. And I'll just point out, I won't actually run it, but we have a function that can build multiple cuts. So if we have a list of cuts, then, uh, then it'll just loop over them all and it'll call build cut, which is the one we just saw demoed. So if we were to have a floor plan with a bunch of cuts, then no matter what that floor plan looks like, as long as it's as long as we know what the cuts are, we can build it using the build cuts function. So now we're ready to start designing the algorithm that actually generates the floor plan. But just to recap on what we did, I I want I want to point out that the most important piece of the planning process in algorithm design is figuring out your data structures. So your data structuring, however you structure your data, that is going to shape how your algorithm gets designed.